How's it going? This is Fox back again for Sound Design Tutorials. Back from my holidays, uh, I'm just working my way through a few requests that I've had via my Facebook page. The first one I'm going to be doing today was this one. It was by one of my subscribers called Venetius de Paula. It's for this track. It's a deep house bass again with Silent. It's dashed up, can't stop the original mix. This is it. I'm not going to play it because it'll interfere with my monetization, but there'll be a link in the description where you can get to this so you can hear it to compare the bass exactly. Um, yeah, pretty good. So, yeah, this is it. This is what I did. I've got it, uh, I've made a little drum loop so you can hear it. It's a real deep bass, this one. Just some ham higher harmonics flicking up as some higher notes are played. So there you go, yeah this was a little bit more tricky than most of the ones I've done with Silent so far to get it sounding exact, well I'll say exact, it's as near as you're going to get with Silent to the one in that track, I was really pleased with it, it's quite complicated, two separate layers, two different filters working two different ways, I've got some key tracking on the resonance and distortion, some EQing, some fine adjustments on the envelopes for both parts, everything had to be very very exact I found with this sound but I did manage to do it in the end. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and initialize this. So we'll go through part A and part B totally separate. We're not going to copy and paste anything over it, as I say, because they are virtually two separate parts. It's almost like having two layers. So part A, uh, we need a square wave is the base of the sound. Change it to two voices. I'll pitch it down one octave. We're going to invert the square wave, check re-trigger off, makes it a lot more thinner and the stereo we want to pull down to around about 3.6, bass patch, this is called, uh, creating the real centre, the deep part of the sound. Phase will run around to 360 although it doesn't really matter. Uh, what else do we do? We'll set up the main amp envelope for part A. You need to back the attack off slightly. This helps stop any clicking as the notes restart. Uh, we want no sustain. We're going to control the length of the notes with a de decay, which was pretty much bang on dead center 5. And a release just a bit below 1, 0.7. So the decay is uh, sort of tailing the volume off towards the end of these MIDI notes. Uh, I'll just show you the MIDI clip quickly. The notes I've got in this MIDI clip are being played at C1. So if you want to make this exactly, you need to be playing around the C1 area. So yeah, that's the amp envelope set up. So the second one was a sine wave. I did six voices of this. I wanted this to be overpowering or more powerful than the square wave. The more voices you create, the louder it gets. That's it, I didn't do anything with it, I didn't invert it, didn't change the phase, detune or anything like that. Just six voices so it was a bit louder. Kept it on octave at zero. So this is a low pass filter for this. It's a low pass filter on both of the parts A and B, but we, we sort of tame them in different ways. For this part, filter A, we are going to use an envelope to close the filter up over time. So we're going to have the starting position at around about... To, uh, 2100 hertz, something like that. 2000 hertz, 2200. It's cutting off everything quite high already. Keep it on a 24 decibel low filter. Give it a bit of drive. This just really uh, acts up to increase the volume because it feeds the volume back into the filter. Um, no resonance at this point. So we're going to use mod envelope 1 to control cutoff A. So in this box, we want cutoff A. So we're going to use this filter to close the envelope over time. So we want the envelope, the close the filter over time. At this starting point, it's quite open. So we want to dial this dial left. So in effect, we're doing this. We're dialing the, the filter closed. And it's the uh, attack time of a filter with full sustain that controls this. So you want full sustain. So once it's done its motion over the attack time, it stays there. And the attack time, we're just going to play with it. We'll give it a bit of release. And we'll just play with the attack time until it gets to where we want it. Uh, 
and there's looking pretty good. Attack time of about 1.9 to something like that. Sounding good. Um, for the master filter, we're going to turn on the warm drive. We're going to control the resonance of a filter with key tracking later on, but for now, that is part A done. Pretty good straight away, but we wanted to have a little bit more bite at the higher end, the higher notes in the MIDI clip, because once I worked out what notes were in the MIDI clip, we're jumping from C1 to E2 and G2, so it's quite a step. And there was a lot more harmonics cut through when these higher notes were played, I heard in the track, which means that the filter was open more and there was more resonance, a little bit more distortion. So, yeah, we are now going to create part B, which is going to give us those higher harmonics. So part B, we'll set up the amp envelope for this. It's pretty much the same as part A, except it's got a little bit of a less attack, around about four rather than five. No sustain, just a bit of release. Uh, we have one voice saw wave. And one voice Q pulse, or the thinnest pulse, it is Q pulse. Also like a B when we pitch down one octave. Also like a B2, pitch down one octave. I didn't pull the stereo in on these two because I wanted them to fill a little bit more of the spectrum, so just leave everything else out. I was all the volumes on full. I didn't invert or re-trigger. Re-trigger doesn't matter anyway because it's only one voice. So we'll solo part B for now. Quite a real thin sound, which is what we wanted. We wanted to uh, just create... I wouldn't say it's a thin sound. It is because it's quite mono, but we wanted to create some raspier parts of the sound that you're going to hear with the higher MIDI notes are played. And to do this, we're going to use a low pass filter again. This time it's a 12 decibel per octave low pass filter, so it's not so steep. But rather than using an envelope to close the filter, we're going to use one to open it very quickly to sort of let in the bright harmonics at the start of the MIDI notes. So, the starting point for the cutoff, we want around about 4. 0.7 hertz, something like that. So virtually dead, you're not going to hear anything. And we're going to use cutoff B in the second mod envelope to open that filter up. The uh, destination amount was roughly about 5.8, but we'll set the filter up first. We'll give it 5.7. Um, again, a tiny little bit of attack just to stop it clicking. Tiny bit of release. And then the, the decay time then tells you how long it takes for it to open and then close again. The more voices you add, it just sort of made it a bit wider and started to smudge it together. But yeah, that's looking pretty good. So a decay of around about 4, 4.3, something like that. So two opposite filters, these are the two ways you can control a filter really. You can tell it you want it to open or close at a set amount of time using an attack, which we have done with this one. Or you can flick a filter open and then close it again using a decay time with no sustain. Two separate modes, two different ways, the two parts together, it sort of adds up and helps things go along. Uh, what else do we need to do? Let's un unsolo it now. Polyphony only needs to be on one because we're only playing one voice at a time, but it comes on three as standard, so you might as well just leave it. So that sounds pretty good as it comes as standard, but I wanted to introduce, as I say, a little bit more resonance, a bit of distortion. Um, the, the higher the notes are played, for that I use the key tracking. So in this MISC one box, we're going to set key track. What key tracking does is it creates a higher value the higher up the keyboard you play. So if you assign anything to it, the higher up the keyboard you play, the higher the, if we choose volume A, the louder it would be. If we chose cut off A, the more the cut off would be open. So we want to use resonance B. We're going to add a bit, this is this solo part we've got here. So those two higher notes in the MIDI clip, um, a little bit more resonance comes in on them. I've got it set around to about four. And also distortion amount. 
we'll go to distortion and set it up first um i changed it to a fold back it's my favorite distortion in silent dry wet only a bit, 20%, and you want the amount on zero, so that the distortion amount, we, we dial in the amount we want, which is going to be roughly the same as what we had, the uh, resonance. Um, the lower notes, you're not going to have hardly any distortion, if any. The higher ones, like the ones being played around C2 or C3, you're going to have a bit of the distortion coming in. All I then did was a bit of EQ, and I think I must have boosted the lows quite a lot, which I did. So yeah, nine decibels, nine, nine and a half decibels. The bass frequency I had around about 180 treble, just tiny bit of boost. So yeah, all that key tracking is doing really, it's introducing a bit of resonance and a bit of distortion only on the two higher notes that are played right at the end of this MIDI clip, this E2 and G2. Gives a bit of raspiness, a bit of grit towards those two notes at the end of the MIDI clip. Yeah, that's it. Not much to it really, say two separate filters. One control in one part, one control in the other. It's not uncommon to do that, to think of it as two separate layers. I could have done two slightly separate silence and added different effects to the two sections, but I managed to get it doing two layers in one. Um, so yeah, that's it. I'll play it again with a little drum loop that I made. There you go. So I'll just say a quick thanks again to Venetius for putting this request through. Keep them coming. I'll try and work my way through them best I can. I've got a couple more to do today. I, I, there's no way I've got time to do every single one that comes through. I sort of pick the ones that I like or the ones that I can fit within my time scale. A lot of these deep house ones I keep doing with silence have been really popular. So if I can, I'll try and work through these as best I can. Uh, I've got a drum and bass one to have a go at later on, which is going to be fun. It's sort of a jump up lead which is a bit different to what i do normally but yeah for now that's me done make sure you subscribe check out my facebook and google plus this is where you need to get in touch with me there's a link in the description at the bottom also you can get this patch for free grab it in the link in the bottom also okay see you on the next one cheers